first speaker, if you're ready. Uh, okay, so this is uh, Heather Talbot, and uh, her work is in ecosystems, embroidery, and felt art. Uh, her talk is called Studying Complex Systems with Thread, and uh, she studied at Staffordshire University in England, and she was drawn to Vancouver by the, uh, the mountains and the general Pacific Northwest. Um, so uh, here she is. Round of applause. Thank you. Um, thanks for having me. I just want to make sure I've got everything going here. Okay. Good. So, um, I'm in tour. This is not a comfortable thing for me, but <laughs> bear with me. Um, I wanted to start by um, making kind of an acknowledgement because um, my art is about complex systems. Um, but that's a relatively new field and um, I wanted to acknowledge that it's very, um, there are a lot of parallels between complex systems and um, indigenous wisdom and some Eastern philosophies that have been around for a very long time. So um, that said, um, I'm going to read the the definition that I found that was my favorite definition of complex systems. So complex systems, they consist of many diverse and autonomous but interrelated and interdependent components or parts linked through many dense interconnections. Complex systems cannot be described by a single rule and their characteristics are not reducible to one level of description. They exhibit properties that emerge from the interaction of their parts and which cannot be predicted from the properties of the parts. So um, your body is a complex system, a forest is a complex system, uh, a beehive is a complex system. Um, by nature it's a complex subject and I am not a scholar of it, um, but I wanted to kind of pull out three things that seemed like interesting things to talk about. So. Um, the first one is how um, complex systems are created of many small parts and sometimes those parts are quite simple but um, from that simplicity there's a sort of emergent property where it turns into this complex system and that's something that really fascinated me and um, that fascination started when I was still at university when I was reading a lot about quantum theory and so if you think about how you know you're sitting on this chair at this table and there are people around you and it's reasonable to think that you're kind of separate and defined and there's a you know solidity to it all but then if you zoom in and you zoom in and you zoom in then that doesn't really hold true anymore and instead there's just this kind of mass of particles atoms floating around and bumping into each other and it's this constant state of movement and flux and I was so interested in that idea. And so I started to make these um, ballpoint pen drawings, which are um, lots of small little markings made with a ballpoint pen. And they're kind of layered on top of each other, in this case, to create the image of a seed pod. Um, and I was trying to sort of create this, um, or to, describe what I saw as this um, ethereal nature of our reality. Um, so that's one example of how like all these small things um, come together to make something complex. But you can see the same thing in my newer work as well. So on the left here is an example of one of my thread drawings. So I um, transfer a photo onto fabric and then I embroider into the fabric with just regular sewing thread that you might use to mend a shirt or something. And I just keep doing that until this image builds up. Um, so again, it's like lots of small things coming together to create something complex. And in the case of needle felting, um, for those of you who don't know how that works, you take kind of loose wool fiber and you stab it with a, a needle that's barbed. 
and you, it keeps kind of layering and layering until this image builds up. So um, this um, thread has kind of goes all the way through my work of creating something complex with lots of small, simple parts. Um, I just wanted to show you, a, that's a, a back view of one of my thread drawings, just so you can see the kind of working and the non-linear aspect of it. Um, the second thing I wanted to mention is how, um, uh, even though my work's very small, all these images are only about five by seven um, inches. They're very, very time consuming. This one on the top right, I started last May and didn't complete it until October. Um, so it's, it's so, the work's so fine that I'm literally looking for hours and hours at these images and studying these um, organisms. And what I find it engenders for me is a real respect for the intelligence of these systems. And I'm using the word respect very intentionally because um, complex systems are adaptive, they respond to feedback, and they have a kind of memory. So a couple of examples of that are flowers have evolved over time to emit a kind of blue halo that we can't see, but the bees can see. And the bees are attracted to that light, so the flowers have a better chance of pollination. So there's a kind of intelligence to it. Another example is how bees, um, when they've been out on a foraging trip, they come back to the hive and they do something called the waggle dance, where um, the dance that they do tells all the other bees which direction the food source is in, how far away it is and how good it is. Um, so again, it's sort of like, by spending hours looking at these systems and studying them, there's this appreciation that forms. Um, the third thing I wanted to talk about is scale. So, <clears throat> people who know my work know that I, for a long time, I have a love of the small. So my work tends to be quite meticulous and I tend to study things that are very small and um, usually my work itself is very small. But recently I have been playing around with scale because um, you know, biodiversity is very important and I'm always looking for ways to communicate just how essential these small things are for our own survival. Um, you know, a couple of examples of that are the, the fruiting bodies of mycelium fungi. Uh, you know, all the mycelium runs under the floor and in the soil and we're now understanding that the um, mycelium is essential for the health of the forest. And we need the forests for the air that we breathe. Or you can also think about, um, you know, your body runs on fuel and regenerates um, in part because of the food you eat, and a third of that food is pollinated by bees. So, you know, I'm trying to communicate how important these small things are, even though they're very small. And so I'm kind of playing with scale as a way of doing that. So. Um, this piece is about, it's just, this is obviously just a small section of it, but it's one of the largest thread drawings I've ever made, and it's about uh, three foot by one foot, and the bees are about the size of, this, about the, size of the microphone. Um, this uh, felt on the left-hand side here, it's like more three-dimensional, it's like it's growing out of the wall. So they're just ways to, bring more attention to these small things that I'm in love with and that we need for our survival. Anyway, that's the end of my talk. <laughs>